also like the Dallas fans to acknowledge the sheer lunacy and absurdity that they're booing DeAndre Jordan tonight and they'll be cheering someone like Greg Hardy on Sunday. That to me is absurd. All this guy did was change his mind. Hmm. Van Gundy suggests there's a double standard in Dallas. Skip, does he have a point? No, he does not. Stephen A. Molly, I vehemently disagree. But for the record, let me state, Jeff Van Gundy is the best NBA analyst on television, bar none. And I like him even more because occasionally he will have the guts to venture forth with a little opinion that's beyond the game about larger issues, about pet peeves of his own Jeff Van Gundy's. But this one, I must admit, really offended me, and I think it's out of bounds. And here's why. I am, I can really speak to this, Stephen A., I am a lifelong Cowboy fan. I attended my first game in 1960, their expansion year, at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas. Eddie LeBaron was the Dallas Cowboy quarterback of the moment. I believe the opponent was the St. Louis Cardinals. That's how far back I go with my Dallas Cowboys. And I told you from the start, I did not want Greg Hardy on my team, but that I would continue to root for my Cowboys, but not for Greg Hardy. Roger Staubach, the great Roger Staubach, whom I covered for many years, knew him very well. He said exactly the same thing a couple of days ago. I root for Dallas, but I do not root for Greg Hardy. And I haven't taken any survey on this, so maybe I'm wrong, but I will bet you a majority of Cowboy fans feel exactly the same way. They root grudgingly for Greg Hardy just because he happens to be part of their Dallas Cowboys that they, they love with all their hearts and souls. So I got to ask Mr. Van Gundy a question here. What are Cowboys fan, Cowboy fans supposed to do? Are they supposed to quit watching the Cowboys, quit rooting for the Cowboys because Jerry Jones signed a bad guy? It's not our fault. We're stuck. So I, I ask again, are we supposed to boycott the Dallas Cowboys because Jerry Jones signed a, a player who is regarded as maybe the best pass rusher, one of the top five pass rushers in all of pro football, who ultimately was not convicted of domestic violence in North Carolina, who did serve his suspension and was completely eligible to be signed by any team. Should we boycott that? Well, I, I, I'm not going to. I'm sorry, but I, I will not root for this man, Greg Hardy. Now back to Maverick fans. Again, as I stated earlier, I don't think anybody threw anything last night. If they did, then they crossed the line. But as paying customers, paying a whole lot of money for those seats, especially the courtside seats, they have every right to boo a player who reneged on his commitment to them last summer and who failed to even man up enough to call Mark Cuban to tell him why he reneged. That's well within their right. I, I support them wholeheartedly for booing DeAndre Jordan. Conversely, I say it's totally okay and totally within, within bounds. It's, it's reasonable to think that you can root for the Cowboys without rooting for the despicable Greg Hardy. Well, my response to you, Skip, is that I totally agree with you. I just don't believe you have anything to be offended by. Uh, I don't think Je Jeff Van Gundy uh, uh, would, would look at it that way. I disagree with what he said as well because I think you can root for a team without rooting for a specific player. Con uh, uh, specifically when you consider their transgressions, there's no denying that. He was at a Dallas game and he's seeing folks personalizing what happened with DeAndre Jordan and booing him as a result of that. I think Jeff Van Gundy needed to recognize that he does play for the other team, okay? So they were going to boo him anyway. He just gave them even more of an excuse to validate and justify doing so. And as it pertains to Greg Hardy, Greg Hardy's going to be out there on the field, and if he gets a sack and it stops a game-winning drive by the opposition and saves a game for Dallas, they end up being victorious. It's not Greg Hardy that you're cheering. It's the result of those actions with, which leads to a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. I'm not saying anything that, J that Jeff Van Gundy doesn't know. I'm not saying anything that you don't know, nor myself. I just think that at times 
we see people engage in such a level of hyperbole and incendiary behavior and the way they go about the business of really lambasting other individuals. Jeff Van Gundy looked at that and found it a bit ironic considering all of this stuff that's in the news for Greg Hardy. I think he was a, mis a bit misguided with what he had to say. I don't agree with him. I agree with you wholeheartedly. But I take no personal offense to what he said. I don't think that he said something that should have been insulting even to Dallas fans. I think that he said something that makes you stand up and remind yourself that while you're rooting for the Cowboys, you need to be careful as to not coming across as if you're rooting for Greg Hardy because there's so much stuff that obviously is going on with him. He might have went a little bit too far with it. Again, I agree with you more than I agree with him. But I saw nothing that he said that anybody should take personal offense at. If anything, it should serve as a reminder to put things in perspective. And I think ultimately that's what Jeff Van Gundy was asking for. Okay, J just for the record, I'm emotional about this because I, I am really, really, really a Cowboy fan. And as I pointed out to you earlier, I covered the Dallas Mavericks from their inception through their first 18 seasons. So I, I know a lot about those fans and how they feel, what they've been through, their height and, and their frustrations. I, I know it. I get it. And it's, it's not fair. It's not a fair comparison well, on either side. I'm sorry. Well, that... Well, that depends. You're right if you're talking about Skip Bayless. You're right if you're talking about people who think like and act like Skip Bayless as it pertains to their fandom for the Dallas Cowboys. But you and I both know and we repeatedly lament how society has changed, how things have changed and obviously not for the better when it comes to how people act how they fail to put things in its proper perspective and how far they go sometimes in expressing the incendiary tendencies and ways simply because they feel they have the license to do so. So if you're Jeff Van Gundy and you're at an arena and you're seeing all of this unfold before your very eyes in the same city where Greg Hardy in your eyes is being applauded to any degree, despite anything that has happened to him, it's something to say to bring attention to it, to remind folks that instead of being like this younger generation can be from time to time, make sure you're like Skip Bayless. Make sure you understand the dichotomy that exists between the Cowboys and Greg Hardy and how they're not one and the same, how they're two separate entities. And indeed, you can root for the Cowboys without rooting for Greg Hardy because some people might need to hear that because some people don't have your same level of comprehension yeah look <laughs> to be fair and balanced here is it is it possible that some cowboy fans like a lot of fans of other teams wouldn't care if jerry went and signed all of his players out of the out of prison you know like and and they won the championship would you still you know you just say oh what the heck they're just football players i'm sure there are those yeah but in this case mm -hmm. th this is so despicable it's so over the edge and over the line that I'm pretty sure, and I can't tell you what percentage, that a whole lot of fans are right there with Roger Staubach. I cringe. I, I don't want to root for, what's his number, 76? I don't want to root for 76, but, but I still i am going to pull for my Cowboys to win somehow, some way. And, of course, as I pointed out, mm -hmm. he's played four games with a total of four sacks, and they are 0-4 in those four games. So the patience is running, you know, wearing thin for him just on a, a football perspective. Listen, I'd feel the exact yep. same way if Lawrence Taylor was still playing today. Would you really? Yes. That's interesting. Yes. Wow. Moving on. Boogie Cousins and George Carl are not vibing. So who is the real king of the hill in Sacramento? We'll put them on the couch and analyze their complex relationship. That's